Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first short video on this kit here and others that I'm going to be getting in. This is some of the Runcam Open IPC stuff. Now, I've tried all the modern HD systems and a few others too. Do you remember things like Connex? And one of the barriers to entry is the high cost with airside units costing 120 to over 200 dollars a piece that means that if you have a relatively large fleet it can get very very expensive particularly if the vendor keeps bringing out new versions of technology that aren't compatible with the stuff you've got having an open standard for something like hdfpv that many vendors could make hardware for could deliver the same kind of benefits that we've seen for express lrs note the word could now, I love solutions that work well within the existing modern hobby with flight controllers and things like Express LRS and all that other goodness. I love solutions that actually listen to what customers and users want and to try and deliver that wherever they can. I love solutions from vendors who are not ripping you off every 18 months to buy new kit to deliver functionality that was actually available in the kit that you've got, but they don't make money if they gave you a firmware update. And I love solutions that work to provide compatibility with their older stuff to preserve your investment in your goggles and hardware that you've already made. Now, OpenIPC, with its recent jump from the kit bashing side of things into more of the vendor supported plug and play side, has just become very interesting. Now, I've been tracking both OpenHD and OpenIPC for quite a few years now and wanted to wait until one of them reached this point to start to make videos. Why? Well, before setting up IPC HDFPV was incredibly complex. Super complex, actually. I need to say a shout out to one of my buddies, uh, Wayne Curry Kitten. Go and check out his videos. Wayne has been fighting and playing with OpenHD and OpenIPC for many, many years. And I've regularly phoned him just to see how he's getting on. And unfortunately, it's been a labor of love for him. And he definitely hasn't given up. But it was something that even somebody like Wayne, with his incredible knowledge and know-how, still struggled to get to work and to be reliable. Plus, the result that you had was even when you got it all working, what you had is some kind of receiver like this that you plugged into a high-end phone or tablet, and that then did the compression of the video stream, and you showed it on the screen. So it wasn't the kind of thing that you could plug into some goggles or something else. But we can now. Seemingly, feels out of nowhere, we now have a number of decent vendors getting involved people like Runcam and Emacs and Esheen all making open IPC stuff including now a Runcam goggle module don't worry we'll get to this all this stuff in a minute what is open IPC well open IPC as a project was all around giving users of IP based security cameras firmware that they could flash onto those cameras to give them full con access and control the idea of using it for HDFPV isn't new and you needed a suitable camera. Classic setup in the OpenHD project and other similar ones like IPC. You had to get hold of some kind of camera with a MIPI connection or a USB camera connected to a Raspberry Pi. And that Raspberry Pi's job was to be a video encoder and a router for the airborne system. Then you had to have that connected to some kind of Wi-Fi um, system to then actually transmit it out. And then the ground station side, you had to have a same Wi-Fi adapter, another Raspberry Pi and some kind of laptop or high contrast monitor or goggle and you had to then make that all work together and that meant that you were flashing firmware using things like secure shell linux stuff creating secure links and encoding video decoding video and it wasn't a simple plug and play process far beyond what most people will probably be willing to tackle definitely far beyond what i was ready to go and play with but now we have this hardware starting to come out with things like the Eosheen Sphere and others. I think it's time that I got this stuff in and we started to play with it, even though some of the software is still in early stages. 
So let's have a quick overview of this latest stuff from Runcam. Obviously, we have the airside unit. This looks, feels, and smells like the airside units from other vendors that we've seen already. People like DJI, people like Walksnow, people like HD Zero. We have a camera connected by a MIPI cable into a unit here. Now, the earlier units from Runcam were a little bit delicate to say the least they were made of two individual boards this one it seems an awful lot more robust it has different ports it has a port on the back which is the same kind of port as the dji stuff so you have a power and ground transmit receive and then you have the two extra pins which aren't connected in open ipc that would normally be the ground and the s bus output you have a port at the side for your Ethernet connection. That's typically historically how you would access these kind of devices to change the settings. Again, it was very heavily computer based, but that seems to be getting better all the time. And then at the back, we have a couple of linear style antennas that you would point up on the model or the car, whatever it is that you put this in. The receiver has all of the controls you'd expect and has been designed to go on the front of standard goggles using the standard part of the connection. Obviously, you can see here there are four antennas. The space for SD card actually is an SD card in the airside unit as well. Like to see that. That means typically things like firmware updates potentially could be done from things like SD cards and stuff, but also it's a place where you can record your footage, which is fab. And on here as well, we have a little joystick so you can navigate around, choose the channels that you're looking for. You can also then have the outputs here. We've got HDMI as well as USB and some other stuff too. So this module is actually doing an awful lot of the hard work in terms of the decompression and all the other pieces, as well as pumping it out on a standard HDMI connection. That means that this is so much easier now. Anything with a HDMI input, including FPV goggles, you can just plug it in. And as you saw, I also got the receiver. So you can plug this into a tablet and then use an application to then view that video live. Again, use pretty high-end tablet or phone because all that decompression of the video stream has to be done via the tablet CPU. Now this kit does feel like a real product rather than some of the earlier attempts and kit that I've heard about. This looks like a modern plug and play HD system, as I've already said, and that makes me feel very positive about open IPC and with the vendor's involvement that they've got now. But we're not quite there yet. I still think, although we're not on the bleeding edge, we're kind of just coming off the leading edge. And there is still a lot of work that needs to be done to make this truly plug and play in a way that's going to set the project up for a secure future and something that we can rely on to fly for many, many years. At the moment, looking around, the documentation needs to be improved dramatically. Looks like Emacs and others are working on that for their own particular hardware. And I welcome that help and support from vendors who are used to writing manuals for this kind of stuff. Lots of beta software. Um, which is always a little bit disappointing when you go to download something and you find it's a version 0 0.5 beta. But I think that's just a reality of how early this stuff is going on. I'm sure as the usage of this stuff grows and the interest in this project improves, more and more developers will get involved and hopefully will decrease the amount of time to get new versions out and to fix bugs as well. I think this is going to be a very interesting year for both OpenHD and OpenIPC. And I think we have to be a little bit careful about overhype. I think as this is one of the exciting new topics, all the usual suspects are going to be making tons and tons of videos on it. And just like all the other HD FPV systems, I'm sure it will have its strengths, but it'll also have its weaknesses. And I think we all need to be on our guard for that hype train when it starts to pick up a real amount of speed. I'm looking forward to having far better documentation and manuals for the FPV system. Nice to see people like Runcam and Emacs are involved. Hopefully they will make it as easy as humanly possible to buy all these components and plug it together. And hopefully it'll all work. Potentially, even if you're just buying all this stuff, maybe you're buying the airside unit from someone else and the receiver from Runcam or vice versa, that it's just all going to work together a la Express LRS. 
To be really successful, this needs to be simple to update, set up and use for the largest market. And that compatibility between vendors is something that I'm very keen to try out. So I'm going to be getting some more open IPC stuff in as well. And the last thing is that regulatory compliance and legal use. So as pilots, we can fly it legally. So in summary, stay tuned. If you have a question or something you're interested in down below, please let me know and I'll try and cover it as I explore open IPC as a user here on the channel. Looks like open IPC is going to be one of those hot topics that we're all going to be talking about in the coming months. And I'm keen to make sure that it's represented as honestly as possible with the minimum amount of hype here on the channel. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.